So, okay, this is kind of where I want to get deep into the trolling methods. Um, I fish with downriggers. Um, some people use divers, so they use, they'll mooch or do whatever. I am a downrigger fisherman. I just downrigger fish. I don't mooch. I, I've been talking to a buddy of mine who's a guy, and he's going to kind of show me the ropes on how to mooch. Um, I run Scotty's. Scotty, some people run cannons. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What's the purpose of downriggers? Get your gear to the bottom, or whatever water, water column you want to fish. Um, weights 10 15 pounds and the reason there's probably not a lot of people here that run 10 pounders but I fished with two ladies in the San Juans no one will probably ever hear about them other than me explaining to it there are two 70 year old ladies who run a 23 foot duckboard their husbands don't want to be on the water they hate the water and they go out by themselves they're shrimping doing their thing and they kill them <laughs> She's like made a while. <laughs> so two seventy year old ladies and they, they, they kill it. It's amazing. And they invited me out on their boat, which is pretty rad, and they wanted me to come out and fish with them. And I, I go to the church with one of the ladies and so it's her and her cousin. And uh, they can't they have a hard time getting fifteen pound balls way out at the end, you know, at the end of these booms and then you're leaned over a big gunnel. So ten pounders you know, depending on where you're fishing or how you fish, right? They've changed the way they fish. They fish 10 pound weights and they do pretty good. You're just never gonna hear about them because they don't do social media and they're sad. And they're, they're awesome. They're awesome people to fish with. So, uh, dipped downrigger balls. I don't run dipped downrigger balls. I've been seeing a lot of Canadians switching to glow um, dipped downrigger balls. For me, I've run the vinyl coated black ones by accident, but I don't think it really matters. Um, especially if you're running twice the distance. I run twice the distance of the boat from the clip. Um, so it all depends. And if you're dragging the floor, right, I don't think I don't think it's gonna matter. You're probably gonna stroke by the silk. So if you run dipped, I think it's personal preference. I don't think it really matters. <coughs> Speeds. Now, how fast does everyone fish here? Two point. Up four. Angle. Oh, angle. 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 Yeah, that's my favorite. That is, that is the, in my opinion, the least useful information I have ever heard in my life. So here I am, right? Someone comes up to me and they say, 45 degrees. Oh, cool. Well, I'm fishing 30 feet of water. You're flying if your downriggers are at 45 degrees and 30 feet of water. If your downriggers are at 45 degrees and you're fishing 300 feet of water, it's not, you're not really going that fast, right? Our downriver angle at Pine Bank this summer, we were I, I thought we were gonna start planing them. You know? It was like you're like looking at the cable and you're like, there's no way that that thing is on the bottom. Right? So uh, downriver angle is important and it's important to know based with your water how deep of water you were fishing. And and it's so, and I feel really bad because uh, sometimes you know you'll see a guy fishing fifty feet of water and his downriver angle is forty five feet and he's on plane going by you. And you're going, yeah, sorry, man, that's not, that's not going to happen. It might, you might get one or two or whatever, or you might get that odd fish, but that's, that's pretty fast. Um, and I'm a shallow water fisherman. Uh, anyone who's fished with me knows that I don't really like to reel anything up over 75 feet. I don't, that's not, yeah. Especially with mooching reels. Who wants to work that hard, right? Um, so angle, what does that look like? <coughs> know how deep you are. 90 to 120 feet, which is kind of what everyone typically talks about. 45 degrees is perfect in that range and it works really well and that you know you may be 45 degrees and only doing 0.9 miles an hour or you're doing two miles an hour and it's all based on current and what you're going through that kind of stuff um, I fish a, a sandy area where we're dragging the downrigger ball so there's a super steep angle and the downrigger you're bouncing and, I, and it stirs up some of the bait fish on the bottom of the floor it works really well so downrigger angle doesn't work there um, it is good to know downrigger angle, but people throw it out as a generic number. Is basically what I want to hit on that. It's just a pet peeve. Um, so surface over ground or GPS, I stick to it's 1.6 to 4.0 miles an hour. This summer we were catching them at four and a half, five knots. It was insane. Or my miles per hour, not really knots, but five with miles an hour current. sometimes. Say what? Right. With the current, right? With the current, yes, yeah. correct. Yep. But even not on a super. Anytime you go to mid channel, anytime you go to possession, right? Right, and so in that area, yes, um, we were fishing Hind Bank, up kind of on top. Same thing, yeah. And uh, 
there was, it was actually, it wasn't a super heavy current at that time. And we were, and like I said, I thought we were going to be playing our balls back there. And just go, even, we're flying. And it depends, you know, it just depends on the day. That day, actually, at Hind Bank, was the first time I had ever been sore, other than tuna fishing, for fishing for Chinook. We caught so many fish that day. We were, and this is kind of a summer gig, right? So you're throwing 22 inches back. You're throwing 30 feet of dead. As soon as you get to 30 is when you're like, start keeping fish. And I went with a guy named Taylor that was out there. And I, and due to Kyle, because Kyle, actually these two gentlemen in front were fishing out there with me that day. We're not, okay. <laughs> they didn't give a, I didn't give a GPS location. Pine Bank is huge. Is it not big, right? Um, so when to go slow, when to go fast. Um, this can be current dependent. You, and, and it really just depends on the fish. Um, if they've been working, if you've had really, really big tidal swings, they're going to be a little exhausted, especially if they haven't found any good feed, right? So if you're not finding a whole lot of bait, but you're out fishing, um, you might need to run slower because they may have been, been working pretty hard. And then if there's a full moon, they may have been working all night long, chasing bait or doing whatever, or fighting strong currents. This is, this is a good time to know how fast you need to fish um, and your location, depending on how fast you need to fish. Um, I'll, get into the, I'll get into more of that here in a little bit. Um, suspended or on the bottom? When in doubt, do both. Do both. Run one high, run one on the floor. Um, we caught last weekend our fish that we caught was suspended. A lot of people were dragging them on the floor, they were catching fish. Um, we were marking a bunch of fish up top, so we, we picked it up and fished up, up quite a bit. Trust your electronics. I don't run a $9,000 GPS radar unit on my boat. I have a, uh, a, a hook series Lorance, and I can see my jig on it when I'm fishing for Lincoln, so it works pretty good. Um, and so it took a while to learn to trust this. If I'm marking fish, um, you can chase them, but by the time you see it right and you lift your gear, it's probably too late. But if you're consistently marking fish in a certain water column, fish it. The bait might be there, but it might not be, and that's just where they're traveling through. You're going to get traveling fish. Um, straighter zigzags, this is a really good trick. Um, I started doing this because I kokanee fish as well. And sometimes you just need to change it up. You don't know what speed they're hitting at. So if you don't know what speed to fish, and you're not getting anything at like two miles an hour, you're not getting at three, and you don't really know what to do, start doing zigzags, big zigzags. And then you start getting strikes, start watching which side of the boat you're getting fish on. Then you'll know where you need to go. Okay, so bam, I'm trolling right, and I make a really, really hard turn, so it's, I wasn't paying attention, I about smacked the boat or whatever, and this down there goes straight, and then all of a sudden you look back and the rod's just going insane. I'm gonna know that I'm gonna troll super, super, super slow that day. And we've trolled, some days you'll troll, you know, 0.9 or one miles an hour, just depending on where you're at. And you can learn how to, like, what speed the fish are eating at by doing zigzags or running straight. And, and this is kind of a good thing to use in a new area. If you haven't fished an area and you don't know what it's like, just run, run some, some kind of larger zigzags. Don't stay straight. Um, Chinook fishing is all about working. You're not, you're not on the down rivers all the time. You're not in and out of the front of the boat. If you're not plowing your best friend Wayne over trying to get to a, a down river to lower it or whatever, right? Um, you're probably not going to catch fish. If you want to sit back, drink beer, hang out, troll across the Puget Sound, um, it's a really good view over by Baby Island. There's like 7,000 seals over there that you can see. Um, can you shoot them? Uh, no. Uh, you can, if you're under fishing, you can shoot them with a paintball. Apparently that has become legal. Or uh, um, slingshots. So the reason that this is important is there are videos of anglers fishing for Chinook. They use the water wolf camera where they put a camera on their downrigger and you'll see fish following your gear for a long, long ways, for, for minutes sometimes, when you're watching it. And then all of a sudden you'll see them, they'll take a turn, you'll see the gear move in a different direction, and the fish comes out and they slam it, and it's it's game on, right? So if you're trolling straight for a long time, and you're marking fish, or you're seeing fish work through your gear, make a turn, slow down, speed up, change it up. What are you gonna lose, right? It's not hitting your gear anyway, might as well try something. Um, so I hit that. Okay, so this is my daughter. Uh, this was at a month. 
to the month of my uh, wife is awesome and she let me take my kid out with me in the boat. Uh, and this is the middle of winter, by the way. So this is a unique, this is kind of a unique picture. I wanted everybody, does anybody see, is there anything different about this picture at all other than that there's a baby sitting there? Nothing? Anyone got anything? There's a fish finder in the back. Look at that depth. What does that say, right? Uh, that I can't tell you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, this is up in area 8-2. There you go. Um, and you can see, where's my downrigger? My downrigger is sitting directly at 40 feet. So I'm 9 or so feet off the bottom. Um, and this just happens to be that day when they were in low, right? So it all depends. Fish do, they don't sit. I had a guy tell me this, and I took an oath to never be that person to go into a seminar and say 90 to 120 feet of water. I won't, I'm not, I refuse to be that guy. So uh, they do, and we catch, we catch, sometimes we catch a lot of fish here. Sometimes you don't catch a lot of fish here, but it's worth trying. Uh, when I used fished out of a John boat, that was my duck hunting boat a long time ago. And uh, I, used, I used a Minn Kota off the bow, uh, like a powered one. I bought some weird clamp thing and hooked it up, right? And I was with my buddy Anthony and we were hanging out and we're in 31 feet of water, and I had my downriggers at 25 feet, and we ended up hooking a 34-inch hatchery schnook right off the beach. I mean, we were, it's like we could throw a stone at the beach and hit the beach walkers with it. It was amazing. So, the, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends. If you're trolling 80, 120, 120, 200 feet, if you're not getting anything, then you bump it in. If you're not getting anything here, you're not moving anything, bump it out. The hard part with this, um, is you're typically not going to see a lot of bait. Uh, you will sometimes see, see a lot of bait float on the shore, but sometimes you won't. So you're, you think, you know, I need to be on bait a lot, but sometimes you don't have to be. Um, and they're waiting for the opportunity or sitting in a bucket. Uh, that's that fish from that day, actually. And then uh, there's my wife with uh, the one month in there. And we actually doubled up. Um, the fish, the other fish was not very, not as impressive, right, or whatever. But, um, so that's the fish from 49 feet of water with 40 feet on the cable. And we doubled up, so there's actually two fish. And uh, it was kind of a sideshow watching my wife reel with a mooching reel with that thing. 